Oh, yes. We move to Monday, January 1st. We get a new year. And, of course, the day when most of the games uh, used to be on. Uh, at 12 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2, we have the ReliaQuest Bowl, where the Wisconsin Badgers and the LSU Tigers are going to face off down in Tampa. LSU currently a 10-point favorite at BetUS with a total of 56 on this. Uh, the biggest news thus far is the LSU offensive coordinator, Mike Denbrock, taking the Notre Dame OC job. And, of course, the Heisman quarterback, Jaden Daniels, is going to sit out this bowl game. Uh, we could potentially see the wide receivers, uh, Neighbors and Thomas, opt out. Although, I will tell you, Neighbors only needs 22 yards to be LSU's all-time receiving yards leader. Uh, so, chances are he'll probably play at least a little bit. The Tigers do have several backups in the portal. They got a bunch of injuries still in the back seven on defense. Uh, Wisconsin, I mean, this is just a mess, right? Uh, the running back, Braylon Allen, has opted out along with the starting center, uh, the starting cornerback. There's four other starters in the portal. You got two wide receivers, an offensive lineman, and a linebacker. And the injury list, I mean, I think the Badgers are going to be on their their fourth string running back. Uh, there's another wide receiver that's out. You got another cornerback that's out. The Badgers are going to be thin here, uh, especially at skill positions. So uh, do with that what you will. Uh, they are going to have their quarterback, though. So, you know, uh, LSU went 4-1 and one straight up, 3-1-1 one and one, uh, against the spread down the stretch. Wisconsin was 2-3 and three straight up. Two, two, and one against the number uh, in their last five games. Wisconsin always shows up for bowl season. They are eight and one straight up uh, in their last nine bowl games, six, two, and one against the spread. And normally that would really make you lean Wisconsin, but LSU shows up as well. They are six and two straight up and against the spread in their last eight bowl games. So it hasn't depend or like none of it matters with the coaches. These are the kind of teams that just show up in bowl season. Kyle, let's start with you on this. Brian Kelly has talked multiple times about the importance of winning 10 games in a season. Last year, we saw him hang 63 on just a completely outclassed Purdue team uh, in that bowl game. Daniels is not playing, but Garrett Nussmeyer has shown over the years he is plenty good enough for the Tigers to do some damage with this offense, uh, especially you know, with the multiple defensive starters out for the Badgers. Now, Fickle versus Brian Kelly, I think, is a fun matchup. Uh, what are you expecting in Tampa here? Well, I mean, I think uh, year one for Luke Fickle, definitely a disappointment for Badgers fans, especially based on expectations that were pretty high. I still think he'll do pretty well there, and uh, I'm not going to get really low on Fickle like some people are. But, you know, to me here, Garrett Nussmeyer, is he like maybe the best backup in the country? He's definitely one of the best backups in the country. So uh, obviously a drop off from Jaden Daniels. That's obvious. We don't really have to say that, but he's very good. Uh, Malik Neighbor saying he would play here is kind of surprising, but it might be one of those spots where he doesn't play too much. So if you want to take a prop under, that would probably be a good bet. Uh, Braylon Allen out, at least thank you guys for Wisconsin out. And uh, Gary, you said uh, Wisconsin does have their starting quarterback, but he hasn't been very good. You know, yeah. he, he really was just okay and the best. They were 128th in offensive explosiveness. I think LSU is going to hit big plays on Wisconsin, uh, even without Daniels here. LSU's defense, though, was so bad, it kind of ruined a, a great chance for a, a really special season. I mean, they had a great offense. The defense just had to be decent, and they couldn't. Um, they were 103rd in defensive line yards. I think Wisconsin might be able to run it on them some, even without uh, those – key running backs. I would lean to the over in this game or maybe a uh, OSU team total over, thinking that uh, Wisconsin's defense is not good enough here. I would probably lean toward LSU minus 10. It's just really tough with so many guys opting out. Uh, we haven't seen these teams in this, uh, you know, uh, in the state that they will be in this game. We have no idea what these teams are. So it's tough for me. I lean LSU or maybe a team total over. Yeah, I, I think I was shocked at just how bad LSU's defense has been this year. Now, obviously, uh, Wingo going out, you know, middle of the year, that certainly didn't help things. They had their their entire secondary was basically out at some point with injuries, and you're relying on freshmen and trying to – it was just a mess. But I think the, the bigger thing was the fact that the defensive line was just not very good. Uh, Parker, let's, let's move over to you here. I, I think that the more fun thing to watch – then this game might be the Tiger and Badger fans on New Year's Eve down in Tampa. Uh, because, I mean, my goodness, when they get together, they absolutely drink everybody out of everything, and who knows what kind of trouble they can get into down there in Florida. Uh, looking at the numbers, though, of course, for this game, LSU uh, has been number two in standard down success on offense over the last six weeks. 
Wisconsin has been number 86 on defense. There is a chance that LSU can stay just well ahead of the chains here. And if they do end up in uh, in third downs, uh, they're number one in the country over the past six weeks in third down conversion percentage. Uh, Wisconsin's defense is number 75 in that metric. Now, that might change, obviously, because you don't have the wheels of Jaden Daniels to be able to get you out of some of these tight spots. Uh, and as good as LSU's offense is, their defense, as like we just talked about, is just atrocious. Uh, I don't, even with as bad as LSU's defense is, I don't know that I trust Phil Longo's Badgers offense, right? What's uh, what's your breakdown here, Parker? Yeah, well, I, I, I will say the LSU and Wisconsin fans, I, I, I you know, have, have been to games with both of them uh, for, for TCU, the Rose Bowl for Wisconsin, and then they played at Jerry World, uh, TCU and LSU. And I had some TCU friends uh, who, who weren't necessarily familiar with the SEC starting to taunt the LSU fans in the parking lot. And I was like, guys, that's how you get killed. Like, this is, this is, <laughs> let them do their thing, offer them a beer. Let's just get in the stadium. Come on. Uh, so, yeah, Tampa, Tampa bars, uh, order more beer. You don't have enough. Um, and I, I, yeah, I think I think you, you can account for the gravity of Jaden Daniels for LSU's offense. Absolutely. Like, you know, a uh, great Heisman season. Uh, I wish he wasn't opting out, but I understand the incentives there um, for him not to do so. And Nussmeyer is fine. This offense is first in EPA per pass and EPA per rush. They're first in echo rate. They're third in points per echo. They're first in early down success. And they're seventh and third and fourth down success. That, you know, Daniels, huge, huge part of it. But it's not like they're going to become the worst offense in the nation uh, without Daniels there, especially especially as Nussmeier is competent as a passer. Um, you look at LSU's wide receiver room, if neighbors and Thomas both play, which so far I have the indication that they are, that's about 57% of uh, LSU's targets go to both of them. And you're looking at 3.81 yards per route run for, for neighbors, 2.65 for, for Thomas, both of them with an average depth of target greater than 12 and a half, both of them with more than six yards after reception. I'm looking at the opt-outs and I'm looking at Wisconsin secondary, and I don't know who can cover them. Um, you have Hallman for for Wisconsin, who's you know 83.4 coverage grade, has the most coverage snaps, but behind him it gets really really rough. Matry is going to be out for Wisconsin, I think I saw, but uh, he's has the second most snaps uh, at corner. He's got a 61.9 coverage grade. Then you start looking at you know. Um, Forquan is going to play. Uh, is he going to take the bigger role? He's had a 57.6 PFF coverage grade uh, in his limited roles this season. I really just think that the the cornerback room for Wisconsin gets so thin against these just NFL athletes um, over at LSU. So pass game advantage, absolutely, to LSU here. Um and, you know, LSU's defense has really been bad in the secondary. Uh, I think that's been the biggest issue is just that they really, really have trouble kind of shoring up their front seven. Their front seven hasn't been great, but the secondary has been so injury laden. And frankly, as we heard Brian Kelly say at the beginning of the season, just not not solid uh, up and down. They're 99th in EPA per pass, but they are 82nd in EPA per rush. Knowing Wisconsin's got some issues, knowing that Wisconsin's not going to have Braylon Allen in the backfield, it's possible LSU can be a little bit more strategic towards uh, shoring up the run game there as well. One number to watch out that, that'll make a ton of difference, I think, and, and really help. Wisconsin is 77th in starting field position on offense, uh, starting at their own 28.8 yard line. LSU is 15th in starting field position allowed, 26.6. Now, a lot of that is Daniels not making mistakes, so most of their transitions are you know deep punts or, or kickoffs and not interceptions. But still, if they can avoid that kind of mistake-free ball, um, I think that they'll be able to really push Wisconsin into these long, long drives, which is going to be great for LSU because Wisconsin is 93rd in quality possession rate. They're only generating a quality possession on uh, 37.8% of their drives. That's not good enough at all. Wisconsin, not very good at early downs. Um, they're 68th. So even as LSU's defense is 99th, that's still a weak point for uh, LSU or for Wisconsin there. I'm just not sure the Badgers can score. My notes had LSU minus anything. Uh, and so I'm going to take the Tigers minus 10 here. I, I've got this by over, you know, 15 and a half by my numbers. So I really like LSU in the spot, even with the opt outs. Um, and I'm going to take the Tigers here in this game. I personally bet LSU minus seven and a half. I hit it again at eight when I got a little more news. Ten, I'm staying away from, but let's lock this in for Parker. I, I like your thoughts there. LSU minus anything. Uh, Brian Kelly, uh, the guys in the chat said it. He is certainly willing to run up the score, uh, especially against the Big Ten. So, yeah, get to that tenth win. Let's lock it in for Parker. He's going to take LSU minus the ten here. All right, quick reminder, uh, hit the like button for us. 
that little button right there it certainly uh, certainly helps us out. Of course, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Uh, hit the notification bell so that you know when we go live. And uh, leave a comment. We want to know your picks on the games. For you guys watching live, you see the truck on the screen there. You know what you're doing here. Uh, go on and put in your guess for who has the golden ticket so that you can be entered in to win the tough truck. And, of course, while you're watching live, get your questions in for Q&A at the end of the show. Uh, don't forget about the podcast, the BetUS Football Show, in your favorite podcast app. That is the NFL Show and the College Football Show. Put right there together in one nice little feed. Uh, the NFL Show, of course, every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern.